20 determination, good aggression. Bravery's not fantastic, but good heading, good marking, good tackling. Solid stuff, quite frankly. Just, he does the basics well. He's six foot seven as well. So when he gets a chance, he is going to be nutting goals in. Into the black hole. And welcome back to another episode of Sunshine on Lathe. If you're still enjoying it, drop a like on the video. That would be marvellous. So today, we've got a couple of quick ones. We've got Port Vale away. I mean, they actually lost by more than us on the opening day. So there is that. Um, but I still think it's going to be a really, really tough year for us. We're doing okay, though. Like, I think we played well against Oldham in the last game. We just need to sort of build on that a little bit as the match fitness builds up. Everybody sort of gets back into the full flow of things. And I think it might take us a little while, but I think we'll get there. And I definitely think we've got what it takes to win some games this season. I'm sure of it. Now, you should be seeing on your screen now some of the wonderful mock-ups that um, Ewan did for the stadium, uh, the new version of the stadium with the increased amount of seats. Now, of course, that will change again uh, as we're down to sort of 3,500 right now as we have to go up to, I believe, 5,500 to be League 2 eligible right now. But nevertheless, it does look sick right now, so you should be seeing those on your screen. Uh, massively thank you to Ewan for that. That's some superb work. Now, I have got a bid in on another guy, another guy, another centre back called Kai, which means we could actually have a centre back pairing of Kai Forsyth and Kai Knight. We could have Cobra Kai as our centre back partnership. This guy's quite decent, but we've managed to get him, hopefully, if he agrees the deal, on relatively low money, which is the main thing. Now, he's not the most mobile of centre backs, but he's got incredible defensive attributes and he's six foot seven. So from corners, we could really have a guy that could smack in some for us. And that's kind of what I'm hoping we can do. We've got to do everything we can to get results in this league. And sometimes you've got to play the game, eh? But he's not here today, and he won't be uh, in the squad yet. Now, again, some more lonely signings I'm still looking at. We've got another sort of, well, three weeks to try and bring some more guys in. Still got those three slots, and I intend to use every single one of them uh, if I can. Ideally on free loan signings, because we can't really be affording wages right now. So, Sol Campbell is managing Port Vale at the moment, which is pretty cool. Um, hopefully, we can, I don't know, grab a just grab a point or something. I'll do a selection advice, but I think it's probably going to want to put people all over the shop here. So actually, it wants to put Dion George in, and I might be tempted to give him his start. Again, these two the correct way. Adabati and Teal. Now, is that what I want? You know what? I might give Rocco Adabate and Connor Teal a chance together today, but in this role. For some reason, again, like, <laughs> come on now. And I know some people say, why don't you just switch them over? Because I like the balance of the squad the way that it is, and I'm concerned if we switch them over completely, it might actually knock that out of balance slightly. Although, in theory, it shouldn't do, because everything's kind of symmetrical. As long as we switch both over, it shouldn't be a problem. But I just, I don't know. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, I guess. So the bench, I'm thinking, we're going to go Dobie, Dally Waters, Blake, Putman Kylie, just in case. Because technically Blake could play in the middle if we really needed him to. Uh, Cartwright, Forrester, and Ruben Lau. Although actually, I think we're going to get um, Terry Bishop in there instead. So let's see if we've got anything for Port Vale. We won't really be able to judge our performances until we're sort of five or six games into the season. And I think that's really important. So he might not be as technically gifted as Putman Kylie, but he does seem to have um, that level of aggression that we want out of that player in that position. He might even have more so, because Putman Kylie lacks a bit of the work rate, but he does have the high aggression, whereas um, Dion George has a bit of both. Harding, driving out of defence. Thomas, uh, he didn't win it. I do wonder if he's going to struggle a bit more. There we go. Lovely ball through from Defty. Wakeling's got to just get the shot away, and he does. Hey, he had to do it. He had to do it. Want well, us to play short passing. Mm, we'll see about that. We're not going to lot of the ball. Dion George, I think, yeah, Mullen got the head on. Defty. Dion George. Let's see what he can do. There we go. Run the side for Curtis Thomas. Can he at least get a cross in? Or drop it off for someone. Defty might. Back for George. And it's back post for Billum. And Wakeling puts in the rebound. We have the lead. Our first ever goal as a professional side is scored by Jacob Wakeling. One of the striker heroes from last season. Really nice build-up play here. Patient. Like, Defty doesn't just cross it. Drops it inside. And what about this for a cross from Dion George? I mean, Billum does his best. Shot is actually well saved. But the defenders don't get to it. And it is 1-0. Port Vale 0. Wickham. Wickham? Whitport Athletic 1. Come on. And now Dion George has gone down injured. <laughs> oh, God. This right-hand side is cursed, I tell you. Cursed. Right, let's get BPK in. I'm going to try him instead of Alan Blake this time because he, after all, is our main man. See if he gets more than nine minutes today. That would be the plan anyway. Go on, BPK. See what you can do as a professional footballer. And now Mullen's pulled up. There's injuries for everybody. Defty could knock it into the channel for BPK. Can he flick it around the side for Curtis Top? Oh, he probably should have done. He might get a chance himself, though. And he's been fouled. BPK wins Whitport a penalty. Oh, here we go. Curtis Thomas is now going to get a chance. Will Potter get red card? No, it won't be a yellow, won't it? So it's a yellow card for Russell Potter. And, well, Curtis Thomas has the chance to give us a 2-0 lead. Come on, Curtis. Score your first goal as a professional. There you go. We're 2-0 up. That all kind of came from um, Mullen pulling up on that left-hand side. And we're 2-0 up away from home. This is glorious, albeit from the penalty spot. But I don't think we don't deserve it. I think we've done well. Both strikers have now scored, which is so nice. Beautiful. 
The other really important thing for me about Connor Teal is he has passing ability. He's the first one we've really had there that actually has solid passing, and that's going to make a huge difference in terms of our chances here. Thomas, round the side for Billum! Saved. Like, we've sacrificed a lot of possession in that first half, but have taken our chances. The Wakeling, lovely goal from Jacob Wakeling, albeit, you know, just a bit of luck, but great ball in from Dion George. And now the penalty. We've just got to hang on here. The player's looking calm, which is a really good sign. This is the area where they're going to get us. If they're going to get us, it's going to be from situations like that. Good header away by Will Harding, and it's been given because apparently Putman Kitely decided to shove Taglioni. Brilliant. Well done. Proper, like, let's not give anything away kind of situation, and we immediately go and concede a penalty, like, two minutes into the second half as Ryan Hardy gets a goal back for Port Vale. Brilliant. BPK not exactly covering himself in glory there. We may well be up against it a lot more in this second half because even with our pressing, we are struggling to get any of the ball. Palmer, well headed away by BPK, and Teal could bring this away. He's got to find Curtis Thomas. Please, Teal. There we go. Curtis Thomas squares up the centre-back and does beat him. Ball across. Wakeling's going to have to head this. Oh, it's a... Oh, I thought it was going to be a penalty to us. <laughs> We've switched to trying to defend this. We are into stoppage time here at Port Vale Harding. Can he just dink one through? I mean, he does, but it's not the best ball at all. And I, mean, I guess it's... I wouldn't... The draw would be okay, but we've got a chance to win our first game in League 2 here. And a great ball in, and that's an E. Oh, wow. I mean, they have no one to blame but themselves there. They should have had an equaliser. Uh, we look like we're actually going to get away with this. Lovely ball out for Dobie. And he could just drop it off. He's found... Oh, he nearly found CT through the middle. That will surely do it here. Looks like we are going to get our first ever victory as a professional side. A 2-1. A tight one. Oh, no, 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 no. Winterbot Winterbottom comes and claims it, and that will surely see out the rest of this match. We've matched them pretty much a lot in this game, but we got the fortune where we needed it, and we've managed to grab ourselves our first ever victory in League 2. Massive, massive win, because it's going to be so important to get victories like that this season, away at the clubs around you in the league. Um, the Dion George injury does concern me, though. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do Derby and Chesterfield off cam no, uh, them off camera and come back for another one. I think at Exeter City in a minute, so let's go. Right, guys, we're back, and we had a bloody crazy game at Pride Park. That's all I can really say. We fell a goal behind after 20 minutes from the spot to Derby County. I put out a rotated team because I wasn't expecting too much and then just before half time i think that's brendan galloway who's on loan i think from everton gets the ball to the end of the box and there is cameron brannigan to roll the ball across to short and just I mean, straight down the middle frankly into the back of the net at uh, long ranger two nil but then just after half time harry hammett we won a penalty through hammett himself actually and then he took it to give us a goal back and then literally less than a few minutes later, this work here, ball comes down to Alan Blake. He knocks the ball into the channel and Wakeling's getting onto it. Gets very fortunate with the way it breaks back against him and is able to bundle his way through to give us a second goal and an equaliser at Pride Park. And then amazingly, with 28 minutes left in the match, Hammett gets the ball at the edge of the area. Completely unmarked at the back post there is Zach Dobby. Lovely little touch for him and puts us ahead from 2-0 down with three shots on target. Very fortunate. But then we were hanging on in the 87th minute, doing a decent job defensively so far, really. Uh, the ball is whipped out to the right-hand side for O'Donnell, whips the ball into the box, and unfortunately, Cartwright puts it in his own bloody net to throw it away what could have been a fantastic win for us in the uh, Carabao Cup. And then, to make matters worse, in the 94th minute, the ball is rolled to the edge of the area and they score a second long-range strike. But this one, even more impressive, as Goddard just drills it. Top corner, uh, two long-rangers and a penalty for Derby. Honestly, we wouldn't have deserved it had we won the match, but my goodness, we came bloody close to pulling off a hell of an upset to beat a championship side on their own ground. We very nearly got away with it too. Uh, we still got an awful lot of money in gate receipts. I think we got like £70,000 as a result from this match, which is huge for us, for our financial stability. But imagine what we could have got if we'd have gone one more round. We did our best though with the rotated side. Next up, we found ourselves in the league at home against Cheltenham Town, who had won both of their matches so far. Defty whipped the ball in. Uh, there was Billum at the back post, and it was almost identical to the goal that we scored in the game against Port Vale as Wakeling put his second goal, uh, sorry, third goal of the season in. Now, they did create more chances than us, which was the problem. But the fact that we had 12 shots on target and only scored once is a bit disappointing. Uh, 36th minute, ball was lumped over the top. Harrick gets in there, first time strike on the half volley, and it was one all. Unfortunate, but yeah, it happens. But then more annoying than that, with 20 minutes left here, we conceded another goal and fell behind here. A big tackle there from Bishop. He doesn't get across to it. And then unfortunately, ball was whipped across. There was Raglan, takes a touch, drills it low and hard. Another long range strike going into the bottom corner. And we fell to another defeat. 2-1 at home to Cheltenham Town. Frustrating. Uh, we weren't that great, but we still hit the target a decent amount. And on another day, we maybe could have nicked a point. So that leaves us 15th in the league so far. We're three points above the drop zone, which is the most important factor. That Port Vale win is super duper important quite frankly. Um, but what I would say is, we, you know, we lost to Cheltenham. They've won all three of their matches so far. And where are Oldham in the league so far as well? I mean, Oldham actually have only won one match so far this season as well. So I think we're a bit unfortunate in that one. But we're still showing bits that make me think we could still have a good season this so far. And you can see Ben putman Kitely, nearly eight tackles per 90 minutes. He is absolutely putting a shift in for us, bless him. 
also a seller sign another centre-back. This is he. This is Kai Knight. Actually looking even better than I thought he was. Some of those mentals are crazy. 20 determination, good aggression. Bravery's not fantastic, but good heading, good marking, good tackling. Solid stuff, quite frankly. Just, he does the basics well. He's six foot seven as well. So when he gets a chance, he is going to be nutting goals in. But also, first time for a long time, I've actually seen a player that has five-star complete potential ability. So I do think we could get more out of Kai Knight. And the fact that we have both Kai Knight and Kai Forsyth, I think our centre-back pairings have really, really improved. And that comes even better because I might have found a really good young striker that we could get on a really cheap deal who is actually probably as good as what we already have. Now, games are coming thick and fast. In fact, that's the guy, Arian Kalantari. That is the guy that we're potentially going to bring in, but I'll show you him in the next video if he signs for us. You'll also be pleased to know Blackhaven have lost. Uh, they lost their opening two matches, which is really nice. I don't know if they lost their third one. But you can see, struggling for fitness now uh, because of all the games coming thick and fast. So we'll have to see what we can come up with. I'll still start with Thomas and Wakeling uh, for now. At the back, though, um, yeah, we'll go with Will Harding and Kai Knight centre-back pairing, which will be very interesting to see what Knight is capable of doing from set pieces. Adabati and Teal, swap them over, of course. Galvin, Defty, lovely old job. Although Teal could probably do with a rest. So maybe we'll get Terry Bishop in for this one. Just don't want to overstress it. I'm going to start Putman Kylie over Alan Blake. Like, he's just putting better performances because he just is that god. I mean, there's not, we don't really know that much about where teams are this so far this season. But what I would say is, you know, Exeter are in the playoff spots currently, and we're not. So we're expecting a tough game. It's just occurred to me that our centre back pairing are six foot six and six foot seven. Um, we have quite literally got like my dream centre-back pairing in terms of that height element of things. But it will obviously cost, cost us in terms of mobility from time to time. But in terms of defending crosses, it's going to be superb. At the very least, we will have solved that problem of us not winning as many headers <laughs> because we're going to be winning everything in the air with those two. Wakeling, lovely flick on for Billum. That's more like it. And Billum's just absolutely taken the defence apart there. Can he find the shot he does and Ward makes the stop? Approaching half-time, pretty pleased with the... Oh, no. Right on the stroke of half time, Exeter get their goal. It's Oliver Pendlebury. And that was a really well worked free kick, but as usual, we weren't wise to it. He goes with the short one. I don't know how he gets this ball across here. Look at that for a cross. And Pendlebury's at the back post. That's a really nice work goal, unfortunately. Nothing we can do about that. Well, other than be better. So we trail to Exeter in a fairly tight game, but look at the fouls. Even without get stuck in on. Here we go again. Here we go. Something from a corner, perhaps. Adabati's ball in. Knight with the header. That's better. Okay, just get that ball in the box now. We've got options. Here's Putman Kitely. Can he dink it across? He does. Billum, not quite. Nice work, though. Lovely ball in from Putman Kitely. And win it. There we go. Compress them a bit more. Bishop. Oh, that's a really poor ball. Uh-oh. And, well, I mean, they weren't there able to win a header there because they weren't even back far enough. Defty takes it short. Oh, go on. Just find a fish out and equalise. A Wakeling! And again! Can he spin? No, he can't. But Defty can keep this in, you know. Loads of options in the box. I don't know why he's done that. Dicko, pick it up. And now Kai Knight's going to get himself sent off. And now, dearie me, now it's all gone wrong. It's all gone wrong. I'm still not overly worried because we're actually still putting in reasonably good performances in most matches so far. We're not getting outclassed. We're still creating chances. We're just not quite finding the net, unfortunately. Putman Kitely, can he hold it? He does. Defty, Wakeling. And Thomas with the strike at Ward this time. They keep picking out Wakeling rather than Thomas. And that seems to be causing problems as well. It's usually it's the wrong way round. Sparks, Putman Kitely flicks it on. Thomas has picked it up, though. Here we go. Thomas can finally try and create something. And he's done well to go past one. Goes past a second one. He's attracting a third player. Finds the cross as well. And Wakeling gets that. What about that? Okay, that's more like it from CT. Now, that was legitimately excellent football from the lad. He does have that ability about him. Galvin. And Thomas makes the run. Can he finally find the equalizer for us? Curtis Thomas, his shot is blocked. And I think we're hard done by. Cleared away again. Push out. Don't let him get that ball back into him. Galvin does brilliant. Oh, no, he doesn't. The right idea. Wakeling's got it, though. Great first touch. Wakeling's in. He has to finish here. Jacob Wakeling, extra touch. And it's saved again by the goalkeeper. I don't know. Seven chances tonight, and we've not managed to score. Yep. Exeter City 1, Whitport Athletic nil, And it's all going to be because of a bloody indirect free kick as well. I know we were going to concede a load of them this year. And, um, yeah. But the fact is, it wouldn't have mattered because we should have scored at least twice today. I feel like this is a game we could have won. But unfortunately, we're going to end up losing it in the end. And we still slide down the table. Frustrating uh, for us. We've not scored enough goals. We we've created the chances. We just haven't scored enough goals so far this season. That's been our main problem. Too many bookings in this match as well. Uh, 20 fouls is a lot for us. Frustrating one. Really, really frustrating. But I do still feel like we're on the right track with the style of football we're playing. And surely, statistically, if we keep playing as well as that, results will come for us. And yeah, at the end of the day, we're not in the relegation zone so far. Rochdale are looking horrendous, which is definitely going to help us.
In other news, Blackhaven have actually picked up a victory now and are outside of the relegation zone, but have lost three of their first four matches in League One. Not so easy now, is it, Moneybags? Hmm. So, next episode, of course, we're going to come back with another away game as well at Grimsby. That's crazy important as well because it is down towards the bottom of the league. And then we'll do a little bit more off camera in the next one. Really start to grind out this season. And hopefully, this is going to be a massive battle for us. We have won a game, though. That's the most important factor. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, drop a like. That'd be special. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be gorgeous as well. Uh, I stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, and usually on Sundays as well. So, go follow over there too. Link in the description. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. As always, uh, hold your gun, Capybara. Bye bye.